In this tutorial, we're going to look at a great resource called Test Teach. And Test Teach is a tool that makes it easy for you to create digital lessons. Their claim here is that you can create digital lessons in five minutes. They're right. You can using Test Teach. As you can see here in this animation, you just do a search and then Test Teach scours the internet for resources, videos, handouts, worksheets, activities, and things that you could choose to add to your lesson and then you drag them onto the screen and create your lesson. Now there is a little bit more to it than that, but that's why I've made this tutorial and you can watch this to get started using Test Teach. Now Test Teach is part of a larger website. So if you just go to test.com, you'll see something like this. And this encompasses more than what I'm focusing on today in my tutorial. But if you go to test.com forward slash lessons, that's where you get to test teach. Okay, and this is what I am gonna focus on. So let's take a look at what it's capable of and why you might wanna use it as a teacher. I'm gonna go ahead and click sign up in the upper right corner. And once you do that, it asks you, who are you? Are you a teacher? Are you a school leader, a principal, or other leader at the school? Are you support staff, student teacher? Are you a parent or a student? Now this is especially important for students, parents, and teachers. Now the reason I say student and teacher is because students can sign up for a student account in Test Teach and can be added into a teacher's class. And parents can also sign up and see some of that information. Teachers, of course, you want to sign up so that you can set up classes, you can get students in those classes, and you can assign them these digital lessons. So I'm going to just focus on the teacher's point of view in this tutorial for the most part, and let's look at what that is like. So I'm going to click on teacher, and then at this point I can sign up with an email, username, and password, or if I want to, I can simply register with Google. It makes it extra easy to sign up for an account. So give me a minute to put in my Google email and password, and then I'll resume the video. So I am now signed in with my brand new account, and because I signed in using Google, it was super easy and quick. Now that I'm signed in, Tez Teach takes me to my homepage or dashboard, and they've got a nice button here that says New Lesson, and that's what we'll look at in just a minute, but I also wanna point out that there are some featured lessons across the bottom here that you can click on, you can preview them, and you can decide if you want to copy them and add them to your own account. Okay, so I'm gonna go here to this lesson on lying. I'll click on it, it opens up, and you can see that they've set up an overview, and this overview consists of a picture, there's a description, and some discussion about that overview. I can X out of that and move on to the next part of the lesson. Okay, another picture with some more discussion and some more text to read. Here's a link to a website. Here's a video from YouTube that I can play and watch. Here's a writing assessment, and there's much more available in this lesson. So this gives you a sense of the kind of lesson that you can create easily using Test Teach. I'm gonna jump back to Test Teach and to my dashboard because it's time now to create my own lesson. Now before I jump in and make that lesson, it is a good idea to create some classes. Here at the right, it says class name and grade level. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna put in Spanish one, and I can select the grade level, click Create Class, and then I could create a second class. Pretty quickly, pretty easily, I can set up a class for each of the subjects that I teach. Now you could also go by class periods, like it says here, first period history. It's just up to you whether you want all of your students in a particular subject lumped together, or if you wanna break it down by class period. And of course, in elementary school classes, you don't have to worry about that. You maybe just put in the teacher's name, your name, as the class name. I'm gonna also put in science and seventh grade. So I've set up a few classes now. Now let's look at how to create a lesson. I simply go here and click new lesson. There's a little tutorial that pops up, but it's pretty short and I'm gonna go ahead and just continue. And now it says, what is your lesson about? And they give you some suggestions to try if you can't think of one. But I would like to create a short review lesson about the water cycle for a science class. So I'll just type in water cycle, click OK, or hit enter, and look what it did. It titled my lesson here, and it also entered it here in a search. Now it won't always do that. Sometimes you may need to be the one to manually click over here and type in water cycle. Okay, it doesn't always 
just put the words in there for you. It's pretty much just the first time that you make a lesson that it will automatically put the search terms there for you. All right, let's look at the resources that Test Teach has found about the water cycle. First of all, here's one that they're charging for, $2.99, and I can click here to learn more about it. If I like this lesson, it looks like it has a few worksheets and some presentations. If I really like the looks of it, I could buy that and pay for it and add it to my lesson. But look at the wonderful free resources that are also available. This is called the water cycle, learn the parts of the water cycle, and it looks like a worksheet or a handout that I can use with my students. I can click preview to get a sense of what the resource looks like. Okay, there it is. And it looks like a diagram that explains the water cycle. It's got some instructions here and then some space for the students to do an assignment. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to close out of these preview tabs and go back here and I'm going to add that to my lesson. And to add it, I simply click and drag and drop it into one of these boxes. I'm going to click back now and I can see that there's a presentation about the water cycle. Maybe that's a good one. Maybe it's not so good. Again, I would preview that to get a sense of the quality of the presentation. I can go back and continue to look and search. So here is a lesson that consists of a presentation, an activity, a lesson starter. Now, of course, I should review all of these in detail and make sure that it's good quality, that it's accurate, and that it fits what I'm looking for. But if I am in a hurry and I need to pull together a bunch of resources, you really can't find an easier or quicker way to collect resources to use in a class. Here's another one that I would like to add. Now, I am out of space, so look what you can do. You can click Add a Row, and then it gives you more space to add your content. Now, I'm purposefully leaving this box open. I could have added something here as well, but I want to leave that open for now. So I'm going to go back, and I could continue to explore and find presentations, PDFs, Word docs, all sorts of handouts and worksheets and activities for the students that are paper-based, or of course you could use these digitally, and I could continue to add them to my lesson. Now if I ever want to review any of these, I could just click on one of them, open it up, and get a better sense of what it is. So this isn't previewing it, this is after I've added it to my lesson, I can click on it to see what it looks like. So like I say, I could continue to add some of these more traditional resources to my lesson, or I could move on and look for some other resources of a different type. So you'll notice that the default search, when you do a search in Test Teach, is for items that are for sale or that are just being provided for free. But if you go down underneath this shopping cart, it lets you search YouTube. And without having to type anything, it just automatically searched for YouTube water cycle videos. Here's a video with a song about the water cycle. And I should, again, preview that and make sure that it's good and that it's accurate. Um, the water cycle takes the water and moves it up and down and all up. And that sounds just amazing, so I think I'll keep that. But as you can see, there are a bunch of different videos and uh, water cycle songs and things on YouTube that you can just click and drag and add in. Next, I could click Search Google, and just like you would expect, this is going to find websites and web content about the water cycle. Just like with everything else, if I want to use this, I can just click and drag and drop it. There's also Google Photos from Google Images, actually, that I can click and drag and add. There's Flickr images, okay, mostly photos that you can click and drag and use for teaching the water cycle. You can insert whole web pages simply by typing in the URL. And of course, you could open a browser, go to Google or Bing or some other search engine and do a search for water cycle. Okay, so let's say there's a website that you're aware of that's really good about the water cycle, but it's not being recommended to you by Tez Teach. You can just find it, copy the URL, and then go back in, paste it in, click search, and it will scour that web page for content that you could use in your lesson. Okay, so that's what that's for. You can also search your test resources. Now these are typically ones that you have purchased and that you've added to your account, and they will be listed here and you can drag them in. Notice that it also has an integration with Google Drive. So if I add my Google Drive account, any documents or things that I have stored in my account, I can pull those in. Okay, and I'm gonna do that real quick. I'll connect to my Google account. I select which account, allow it to connect. 
Okay, so now when I go back to Test Teach, now when I go to Google Drive, here in the list of sources here at the right, notice that it has found my Google Drive documents and spreadsheets and things like that. So I can just click and drag and drop those in as well. Now I need to add another row, okay, but I can now add directly from Google Drive. Dropbox works similarly. I can add that account in. And then sometimes you may just have a media file on your own computer, maybe a PowerPoint that a friend has sent you and you haven't put it in Google Drive, but you want to include it. Notice that it allows you to upload files of just about any type. It says all files. And there may be a few restrictions, but for the most part, you can upload just about any file and add it as part of your Tez Teach lesson. Now, the final option here, the final source of materials and resources that you can bring into your lessons is core standards. And these are Common Core standards. So I can go in and choose a Common Core subject, Math or ELA Literacy, and I'm going to go with Literacy. You select the grades and then do a search. Okay, so let's say this is going to help with some language standards. I could find the particular language standards that it'll help with, click and drag, and drop them here at the top where it says Lesson Standards. And it'll also help with some of that. Okay, so I can have multiple standards listed there. All right, so I just think this is an amazing interface. You do one search term here, let's say Spanish verbs, my favorite subject and it finds free and paid resources, it finds YouTube videos, it finds images, it finds all sorts of things. You search once, but you get a wealth of resources that you can click and drag and add to your lessons and then provide those to your students. Now there are two other types of activities or resources that you really need to know about if you're gonna use Test Teach, and these are ones that you create yourself inside of Test Teach. The first is you can click to add text. And it gives you a text box with some limited font options and things like that. And then just click in the text box and start typing. Okay, so this might be a good way to introduce the lesson to my students. So I could type in something like, you know, before we delve more into life science, we need to review the water cycle. And so there's, there's an introduction. I could highlight it. I could bold different things, underline. I could increase the font size and or change the font. Okay, so lots of options here, but not as many maybe as you're used to in Microsoft Word or something like that. So I can click Done, and now that text is part of my lesson. Now the other option that you have for creating just right in Test Teach, creating from scratch, is that you can create a quiz. So I would like this presentation to be the second to last part of my lesson, and the last item, I would like it to be a quiz. So I click Add Quiz. I can put in a question here. So I could put in something like, which part of the water cycle would rain fit into? Kind of an easy question. Not phrased perfectly, but that's okay. So I'll put in condensation, and I'll put in precipitation, and I'll put in evaporation. So you can just put in the multiple possible answers Notice that it's marking condensation as the correct answer. So you gotta watch out for that. It's gonna automatically pick one and make it the correct answer. So I need to change that to be precipitation, and then I can click Done. Now, if I want it to be more than just a one question quiz, I can go down and add a second question, put that in, put in some answers, and mark one of them as being correct. Then just click Done. There's my quiz, and I have put together here a pretty great lesson. Now, of course, I should have been more careful about it and reviewed everything, but it's pretty much done, ready to be shared. So notice here at the top, it says print. You could try to print some of these things. Some of them won't print that well, but most of them would probably print fine. But the best option for sharing, I think, is to click share here in the upper right. I can decide which of my classes I want to share this with or assign to. That makes more sense, right, to think about it as assigning it rather than sharing it. So I'd like to assign this to my science class. Here's a link to the lesson as well. If I copy-paste that link or if I email it to someone, that lesson will be viewable by, by other people. Now, of course, this is the public link to the lesson. And so that person that sees this and finds it, clicks the link, and if they participate in this lesson and take the quiz, because they're just a member of the public, I might not, as the teacher, be able to see their scores. I'm not exactly sure about that, but I believe that to be the case. But anyway, for the students that are enrolled in my science class, they will be able to take the quiz and I'll be able to see how they did. 
Now there are other ways to share this besides assigning it to your students or just copy pasting this link and putting it on a web page or an email. Notice that they have an integration with Google Classroom. You can also add it to Twitter, to Facebook, and then these are some really handy other options in my opinion. You can email right from TezTeach this lesson to somebody else so that they can see the lesson. You can also embed the TezTeach lesson. If you know how to do embedding, just copy that embed code paste it into some other site that allows embedding and your Tez Teach lesson will show up in that other website. And then if you use mobile devices a lot, QR codes are great options for getting students to the right places. So I could just copy this QR code, put it into a Word document or a presentation. Anyone that scans that code, it would take them to Tez Teach to this particular lesson. There are some privacy options to consider. Who can view this lesson? Is it private, only I can see it? Or is it anyone, public on the internet? Or is it only people that have the link and my own students? So you have to consider which level of privacy you want. Which resources can be copied from this lesson? Let's say somebody finds my lesson. Can they copy all of it? Or only the public resources or none? Do I want it just to be saved for just me and my students? You can also collaborate. You can add collaborators so that uh, multiple teachers can work on the same test teach lesson. So some pretty exciting options for sharing and collaborating. Okay, so let's look at what it would be like for students to experience this lesson plan. When I click on it, I can click on play and this is what my lesson will be like when it's experienced. There's the first part of my lesson. The students then click next and here's a handout that I included. Here's a presentation that I included. Okay, it's loading that in. And you can click on the slides to advance the slides. You can also use these arrows down here. When I'm done with this presentation, I click this arrow to go on to the next part of the lesson. And you can see it just proceeds through each part of the lesson. Now, as the students look at these items, there's some wonderful tools that they have. Notice what they have above. They can download these parts of the lesson to their computers. They can save it to OneDrive. They can print them. There's also some more options here, including this wonderful option, Translate. Okay, I want to translate this into Spanish, this document. And on the fly, right then and there, notice that it tries to translate it. Is it going to be able to translate written text like this? No, of course not. But down here, the typed text is translated and pretty well. So that's a great feature to have built in. You can also download it as a PDF. So the students have some pretty good options here. They also can add comments to this resource. Okay, so they can put in a question there, enter it, and it becomes part of the discussion for this document. So those are some pretty good options. Now I'm going to go to the very end. This is what the quiz will look like for the students. They can go in and put in what they think the right answers are, and I'm gonna get one of these wrong. I'll click Submit. Notice that it tells them right away, yeah, you were right about this one, but this was wrong, and here's the right answer. So that's what the quiz looks like for the students. So, you know, I really like Test Teach. I think it has some wonderful aspects to it, and my favorite thing about it is it makes it super quick and easy to start collecting resources from a variety of sources that the teacher can use and that the students can use as they learn new content. Now, one thing I should emphasize, when you create these classes and then start assigning things to those classes, how do the students get into those classes, right? Well. There's a couple of different ways. First of all, I can click on any of these class titles, and probably the easiest way to do that is just to click Add Students Now. When you do that, it shows that class code, and it says Sign Up Students Using Your Class Code At, and then you click this link, and you might wanna copy-paste that link, put it into Google Classroom, or put it into your LMS, whatever you use, or on your website. But anyway, any student that goes to that website will be able to sign up, They'll be able to choose student, register, and be able to put in this code, STCW. They put in that code, and they'll be given a Test Teach account, but not only that, they'll be added to my specific class that I want them to be enrolled in to see the assignments that I give them. So it's pretty smooth the way you add students to Test Teach. So I'm pretty excited about Test Teach. I think it's a great resource for teachers and for students. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. And please consider connecting with me on my social media websites like Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. And please do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And watch for a new video at least every Monday.